ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Well, I was going to say to the fintech frenzy, this isn't really a fintech frenzy. There really wasn't much news. Um, so I wanted to go live and sort of talk about, you know, the channel and a lot of questions and concerns that people have been having lately that I just thought I would address, right? Um, so yeah, it's just going to be sort of a, a, a closer knit sort of video. Um, I first want to talk, I don't know what I should talk about. The, the, there was a lot of flack about the, the course. I was super surprised by that. Um, there were videos going on, people saying that I was pumping securities and all this stuff. And I just wanted to sort of get it all off my chest because people were asking me to sort of comment on this on the SoFi Weekly. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to take time away from Tevis's channel and Steve's audience and all this stuff to talk about stuff that's just like just here. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the course for a sec. So one, what I found out on YouTube is that uh, you, you get rewarded by saying the most basic information. Uh, like some of the best rewarded videos that I have on YouTube is me just breaking down a seeking alpha seeking uh, alpha article or talking about a price target or something like this on a stock that a lot of people love right um but what i realized is that the more i was having more fun going into detail on stuff like really really diving deep like um i've got this video on youtube called anthony j noto daring the odds winning the game and I made this video and put a lot of time and effort into it, trying to find every single detail on this guy going through articles that were written back in the 1990s. And it was a lot of fun. And I was like, wow, this is, this is something I could really, really get into, like this sort of deep diving documentary style of making videos. And what I found out was that it got 5.2 thousand views on that video. I made, I'm looking at the, the chart right now. I made $66.72 from making that video. I'll, I'll share my screen. I'll just show you guys. All right. That, that, that's what the video made me. And then it sort of just, you know, the views just flatlined on this. And it said, uh, this, this sort of gray bar here is like, you know, on average, what I'll do on a video. And I realized that I didn't get in, there's, there's no incentivization, if that's a word, <laughs> Uh, there's no incentive to go really deep into videos. I made a quick video on Neo Financial a long time ago saying, hey guys, uh, this is the bank that I really like using. Here's the benefits. If you guys want an affiliate link, you know, use this sort of thing. And I made $9,000 making that video. Nine grand. Just talking about this, a bunch of people signed up, great banks, still love them. Um, but it's not nearly as exciting as the stuff that I, I want to go and do. Um, and so I don't know that that's just the way fi finance content works, right? There's, you see people like even Amit, uh, financial education, Jeremy, Graham, Stefan, meet Kevin. The idea is to just make so much content and all those people do make great content. I, I, I really, uh, admire, you know, a lot of the finance people on YouTube, but it's not to go in depth. It's to go and hit off the really important news right now and not get into detail. And I, there, yeah, it's just, there's only so much of that I can do. And I don't want to get bored of this because this is sort of like my dream job, you know, like, like, uh, there was a video that came out sort of bashing me talking about, um, you know, me being a financial advisor and all that stuff was, you know, they didn't even say that I wasn't, they, ver they went to my LinkedIn and everything, they verified it. But, um, I, I, I want to do the parts on YouTube that I love doing, which is like going really deep into content. And some of the most amazing content in my mind is like whenever we've broken stories and gone into super detail, like, uh, you know, we found the SoFi layoff story before, before anyone, before the company even announced it, just because I was going through LinkedIn, just looking for a story to tell. Uh, you know, we broke stories on new Galileo clients, like Remissa Online, Credit Genie, Zero Bank, those are all, you know, future investing exclusives. I said that SoFi was getting rid of crypto way before anyone else had even brought that up. You know, I like going that extra distance to find stories that I, I find compelling. 
and they're not rewarded. They're not rewarded at all. They're if I was just going for just straight views, going for what the algorithm wanted, I'd just talk about Tesla. Tesla's a bigger, a, a bigger stock for me in my own portfolio than SoFi is, right? And there's a massive audience for it. But I also feel like it would be so redundant. What I'm what I find, what I think I'm doing to SoFi is not pumping it. At least that's not the way I I don't think I'm a shill to this company. I think that there's a, a a huge lack of content for a very exciting company that I feel like I could break stories on. And that's really, really exciting. But in the same breath, they're not being rewarded, right? And it's hours of my time. Like I said, I'm a full-time, I'm a full-time financial advisor. I'm a hundred percent commission based. So the time I spend being an actual financial advisor, like I I promise you. The hourly rate doing YouTube versus doing uh, my finance job is not even comparable. It's 10 to 1, probably. <laughs> like, uh, but I really like this. This is like my dream job. I love seeing the people in the community that I continue to see over time, and I build these relationships. And uh, the truth is, is, I really like speculative positions. I'm a very high-growth investor. Um, and that leads to a, a mixed portfolio of like positions that have done amazing, but it also leads to positions that people can attack, right? Like there's, of course, in the grand scheme of doing this for like three years, I'm going to have positions where like skills, for example, total miss. Now, I, I personally would say a lot of growth investors got caught up in that because daily active users were growing and they were showing a lot of you know, sort of that road to profitability. And there were so many things that you can get caught up on as a growth investor. The same thing that I think people got caught up on in Peloton or maybe even a futuristic one, it would be hymns. You know, they kind of force you to look at certain metrics and disregard others because those are coming. That's why I'm not touching hymns right now. You know, I've, I've learned from those mistakes and said, okay, well, I'll wait for them to hit some more of the metrics that I like before I take on the risk because, you know, it's just, that's, that's investing. Um, that being said, I, there was a video that was made about me talking about how I'm, you know, pumping securities and all these things. And the problem is, is that, you know, you, you can bring up stocks that have sort of done this bell curve-esque, uh, you know, movements. And you can talk about it as if, you know, back whenever I made it back in 2021, that I'm still holding on to that stock today. People could say that about Adyen or something like this, like a stock that, you know, it, for, for the people who really watch every day, you guys will know, like, very, very candidly, I bought whenever it was really low. I only started talking about that stock whenever it was about $8 a share. I bought it all the way down into the sixes, had about a seven something average. Then I sold that stock just as it uh, got to $13. I told everyone. So if that stock continues to run to 18, right, my reputation gets hit because I didn't hold it to full value. Same thing with Palantir. I was holding on to Palantir as it rose and I sold it at $16.80 or something like that. Did I get the 20 plus, you know, run up? No, that's my loss. But the, the thing is, is that if, for example, and now I, I know there's probably Palantir people in the chat, but if Palantir goes to zero, people will look at that video that I made saying, hey, you know, this is why I'm buying Palantir back in 2021 and say, this guy promoted this stock at $10 and now it's zero. When really, I liked it at 10 and then I didn't like it and left at 17. Now that's not the case for skills or, uh, you know, Voyager, for example, that's another one. There was a, a time, actually, whenever I made the first Voyager video that I made, I think it was like two days or three days later after I made it, the stock 100% climbed. But that's not seen after years of, and by the way, that was luck. I'm not trying to claim that that I, I saw that at all. But, you know, there was, there was conversations talking about Carnival Cruise, for example, was another one. Carnival Cruise. Well, look how you know, flatline that company did since the time I made a video two years ago. I made a 100% gain on Carnival Cruise, 100%. I, 
I bought, uh, I forget what amount it was at like 28. And then I bought this huge chunk at $8 and it averaged me out to like 14 something. And I sold it at like 30. It was an amazing trade for me. But that can be twisted and turned to seem like I'm, you know, like not, not every position works out entirely if it's a trade. Same thing with PayPal. The same thing could happen for PayPal. If I'm talking about it now and it runs up to $100 and then goes back down, because I don't think I'll be in PayPal forever, but I think it's a good short-term trade. Anyway. I, I, and by the way, I'm not trying to bash the person that made this content at all. You know, I think that, um, I don't know any, like, I, uh, but, uh, I think it's the same similar hustle, right? Like he's, uh, talking about me making content for SoFi because it's what gets views. And they also make videos on different securities. They don't want to, or they don't get as many views, but the scam videos make a, a ton of views. So they really do those. And they made one on Emit. And I think Emit's one of the people that like, like is the least scammy person in the entire finance industry. It's crazy how much I respect Emit. I talk to him all the time and I have just more gratitude for that guy over time. It's nuts. Um, but okay. Oh, then, then there was another one. There was a video in particular that they were talking about that, uh, you know, so or, or Shopify 7.5x by 2025. If you actually go into the video, what I was regarding was a Motley Fool article that said that it was going to be a trillion dollar company by 2025. And then I broke down the possibilities of if that was going to happen. And then I even said, I probably put a hold on this stock. I'm not really into it right now. You know? I didn't believe that that was going to happen that quickly. The multiple was just uh, crazy. But because the stock had taken such a drop off since then, which I've aggressively added into uh, that position, you know, again, but that's not seen on a video if you're just going back to all, all the latest or oldest videos or whatever. I don't want to make videos uh, like I, I'm, I'm not making videos that that show um, performance or anything like this. I just like the news content. This is this is why I think the fintech frenzy is so great. It's like here's all the stuff that I like about the stocks that I like. You do you. <laughs> I'm not telling you guys to buy anything. It's just like this is what I like, right? I'll take questions and everything now. I know I'm kind of like ignoring the, um, the 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 chat right now. I just have a lot on my mind. I wanted to also talk about the the 10x course, which was the the course that I decided to make that I'm charging money on. First things first, a bunch of people said uh, in the SoFi Weekly, they wanted me to address it, that saying, you know, 10x sounds like a get-rich-quick scheme. And to be fair, the name was my idea, and I get why you can feel that. That That is a kind of a dumb name the more I think about it, because there's no timeline there. It's like, I don't, If for the people who actually did get the course, you'll know, I'm not talking about a 10x within the year. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm just talking about you know, creating a, a a theme of investing that can try to outperform the market by going more towards growth, right? Uh, I'll just share this screen really quickly because this is something that I, I I just like to highlight. Over the last 20 years, the S&P 500, which is the benchmark for all investing, the hard thing to outperform, right? What Warren Buffett says is, is the, the hallmark of investing has gotten pretty well destroyed by the NASDAQ, which is much more tech-focused, okay? Has about twice as many tech companies in their uh, top 100 holdings than the S&P does. And so you can get a 1,200% increase versus a 520% increase because they're focused more on growth and innovation. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can... Scroll through. That doesn't mean, like in 2022, the NASDAQ dropped uh, 32%, where the S&P 500 only dropped 18%. So in particular times, investing or, or uh, growth investing or these sorts of things 
can be not the way to go. But over the grand scheme of things, at least the way that I've seen it, is that it greatly outperforms the broader market. I love innovative growth stocks. I love the uh, legendary investors who follow them, and I try to follow those people pretty on point, right? Peter Lynch has got to be up there on some of my favorites. I, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, the naming w was, was a problem, but also I feel like a bunch of people were like, you know, really, uh, yeah, I don't know, got, got the bad feeling because I don't feel like it was um, something that I was trying to, you know, a get rich quick scheme or something like this. But I wanted to get back. Why did I even create the course in the first place? Like I showed you with the Anthony J. Noto and anyone that's getting in here, because whenever I first started the, the live stream, there's way less people than there is now. But um, whenever we look at YouTube's algorithm, it really does promote like easy content to make. You know, the, the seeking, al seeking alpha, picking apart videos, these sorts of things, like those get all the views. People just want to know whether to buy or sell. But I get bored just repeating the same thing. And what's the point of trying to replace a nine to five job if I'm going to go in and do something that I dislike, which just feels like a nine to five once again? That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to build something that I really do uh, enjoy making, you know? And so if I do go and make this Anthony J. Noto video that I uh, you know, did a lot of good deep dive videos on that aren't rewarded. Well, I have two ways of doing this. I either ignore the deep dives completely and do the simplistic videos, or I do a deep dive content and say, you know, the algorithm, okay? I know that way less people will want this level of uh, deep dive content, like going really into the nitty gritties of a position. But there's probably a thousand people on here that do want that nitty gritty stuff. So I can't put it on YouTube because I don't want to put months and months of my time to get $6. I know that um, it's not all about the, the money, but also it's like, I, I just bought a house. You know, I got to put food on the table. So the content kind of has to like, I, I need money somehow. So we got to charge for the content if YouTube is not going to supply me with the viewers, right? So the, the, the way I thought people would interpret the course, and now this doesn't mean that I'm right, because obviously I agree with you guys. But nothing of what we're doing previously, the FinTech Frenzies, the SoFi Weeklies, the, the full videos, I got one coming out tomorrow, the broadcasts, all the live, uh, or all the earnings calls, all that stuff, none of that is changing. I'm still doing all of that. I'm getting ready to do a really fun video with a bunch of PayPal investors. It's going to be great. All completely free. But for the people who really, really want that deep dive content, here's another completely separate thing that's not going to slow down the content over here that will allow me to make something that I'm truly interested in making that is also worthwhile for my investment. And I don't know. I... Maybe we can open this up to actually asking some questions and stuff, but um, yeah, just that's that's how I'm feeling. And I'm sure there's, I got a whole list of stuff that I wanted to talk about that obviously is kind of weird to bring up in a fintech frenzy or some of this stuff because there's not people who come to want to watch that stuff. But I did want to still talk about it. Put Lincoln in more more videos <laughs> and get more views. Yeah. Tanner, you should invite Strongman on to discuss your feeling. Uh, honestly, I to 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 be real, I could be wrong. I don't think that he has any prejudice towards me. I don't think um he he makes videos on positions that he likes. I make positions on videos that I like, right? I think the difference is, is that it's easier whenever you're going after speculative high-risk positions. Like, 
I almost <laughs> like, like look at a venture capital company, you know, how many companies that do they find that fail that then get beat over in terms of earnings because of the ones that they had gotten that have won, you know, for me, it's like, one of the first investments I'd ever made, 12X in my portfolio, is a company called Canopy Growth Corporation. I don't even remember, I'll, I'll have to go back and look at the exact date that I bought it because I was looking at it recently and they've just split the stock into a thousand because the company's like dead now. But I bought that stock at $4 a share back whenever weed was legalizing here in Canada. The hype was going crazy. I ended up selling that stock at $48 a share. It then ran to like 72. I didn't get that, okay? I ran it to 48 though. It was a 12X in the value of my portfolio. At the time, I was like a kid, okay? I think I was uh, 18, 19, something like that. And I had like $6,000 in that company. And then that went to like, uh, you know, 70,000 or whatever it was. It was a great uh, purchase for my portfolio at the very start of me investing. It's really what caught my eye. And if you were to look now at that chart, you'd think like, you know, oh, the guy's down 90 something percent. That's not true at all. Like <laughs> if someone doesn't know your, your entrance and your exits, like the fact that you guys, or not, not you guys, I'm not saying you, but the fact that people who want to, to, to tear you down can point to the highest point in this stock, the all-time highs, and then point to the all-time lows and say, look what their portfolio had done. And that's not the truth, you know? I very rarely ever have bought in any companies that were at all-time highs. What does a weed stock luck investment have to do with teaching people how to invest? It, well, it has to do with the fact that uh, I did great on a company that a company has actually performed poorly and that determining that the investment for me was poor is, is a, a, a falsity. It's not true. It's like one of my great investments. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, own CGC from when it was Tweed. Exactly. Uh, there you go. I, I was back then as well. I like, I, <laughs> anyway. Tanner, can you provide some information about your courses? So right now, like, there's only one course. And that was another thing that people had uh, stated, is that, like, this one's only for SoFi. This is a SoFi-specific course. Um, if he ever does another company, he's going to, charge again or something. That's not true. I uh, very specifically created this course to show my, my way of looking at growth stocks, innovative companies that potentially outperform markets and um, use SoFi as a case study early on before seeing Q4 information, before seeing you know the years to come as a way of stating like, Look, I'm not just going to talk about Tesla or um, Canopy Growth Corporation or NVIDIA or Shopify or Zillow or any of these companies that uh, have done well for me. I want to talk about something that will do well for me and, you know, put, put a little bit of emphasis on being early because I am confident. And if it does work out for me that the stock does you know, continue to perform well, but I offered this a long time ago, I'm going to look like a genius. And I like the idea of that. <laughs> I don't think that that's a bad idea, right? Um, ba -ba -ba. Tanner, have you thought about inviting Stock Goat to the SoFi Weekly? He's already been on. I And honestly, I invite him a lot. Move on, Tanner. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what What do you think this video is about? It's addressing questions and talking about what's next for the channel. Uh, this is not a fintech frenzy. I don't know if like there's no fintech frenzy anything. I'm not. There's no news today, so I thought this is just a good time to talk about the channel. Me, that's not interesting. I didn't think that this would get a lot of views. It's just about 
uh, for the people who, you know, did think that I was selling some sort of get rich quick scheme. I'm not saying that SoFi is 10Xing anytime soon, okay? But it's about finding a compounder that will outperform the markets over long periods of time. High rate compounding. That's the important part. Um, yeah. Tanner, is there going to be a deep dive on SoFi's tech in your course? There is a, a deep dive on the SoFi technology. There is. There's even like, like I said, there's a bunch of companies like Galileo companies that no one else talks about that I've went through the user agreements and found out that they were, um, you know, Galileo clients. To the people who want to know whether it's, they should buy or sell SoFi, you don't need to know the fact that they have these companies as one specific segment. But I like doing those deep dives. And for the people who are interested in those deep dives, that's who the course is for is um, just like uh, showing you how much information that I put into a company to, uh, to buy it, I guess. I don't know. And those Galileo clients, by the way, are Remiss Online, Credit Genie, Zero Bank, which were the ones that uh, I said earlier. What to expect on the 25th for PayPal? Um, so I'll be doing a collaborative um, thing with Couch Investor. We're doing a, a video for that. So, yeah. Why do you like SoFi, Tanner? I think there's enough content on that already to click back on, uh, so I don't have to answer that here. Love your passion. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. It's not, it's not that, um, like this is not going to be the last time that someone comes and, you know, picks apart my old videos and everything. I just thought, you know, a bunch of people wanted me to address this. And I see the comments, they're going, why are, why is he ignoring these questions? And I don't want to ignore any of those questions. I just don't think that they're a pro, like, I don't know which platform to address those concerns. So that's what this is. And if this all happens, I might do this on like an annual basis. Here's the crap that uh, people have and uh, against me, and I want to address them in the way that I was thinking. And I'm sure I'll make mistakes and uh, investment mistakes and um, social mistakes and all this stuff. There was another one where I I, I was doing a live stream and I called someone out and uh, about the amount of shares that they had. And I, 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 the second I said it, I thought, what a nasty thing for me to say. But it's live content. It's going to happen, you know? What do you hold outside of SoFi? A lot of tech and a lot of companies too. What are some of your five-year goals, both professionally and for the channel? So I've been thinking about that a lot. And um, I do like my job. I really do. The only difference is, is like for being a financial advisor, if you want to make any money, you got to hang around people that have a lot of money. And so they skew much older. Okay. The, I think the average age of my client, uh, clients is like 63 or something along those lines. Whenever I first started YouTube, I had 800 clients um, that I, I was working with at the time. Now that can sound like a ton uh, for, for people that do more like, um, financial planning or something like that. It's a little bit different, but anyway, as time has gone on, I went from 800 clients to 750 clients now, <laughs> you know, and, and it's not that I haven't gotten new clients, but it's that I've, I've sold clients and I've, uh, you know, not worked with other ones and all this stuff. But the truth is, is like, I'm just pouring much more time into YouTube not as much time as my as the job, but the the ratio has gone like this, and this has come down, and this has gone way up because this is like YouTube is really what I like to do, but um, yeah, it's just it's I don't know. Here's a hug, bro. Screw the haters; their opinions have no value. You can't pay a bill with them, lol. Uh, I get my fair share of haters as well. I just ask where the four million dollar portfolio is and crickets. 
<laughs> I appreciate you, TJ. Uh, Tanner, you know, I'm a long time viewer, Josh. I absolutely do. Um, I believe the information you put out for viewers is invaluable. It takes a tremendous amount of work and effort and you should be compensated for it. Thank you. Uh, I, that's, uh, at least, you know, <laughs> that's at least where I'm coming from is that right now that Anthony, no that Anthony J. Noto video was the most fun to make and I lost money on it. And, um, I could go back to doing things that I don't like and be highly compensated for them. But I, I don't know. I'm just chasing a dream. You know, I'm just trying to do something that uh, I think is valuable to people, but also, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, definitely not trying to scam anyone or do anything along those lines. If you don't want the course, don't buy the course. If you want the course, buy the course. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you not to buy the course. I mean, hey, I'll, I'll take your money. There's good content there. But you also don't have to. You know, I'm not, I'm not paywalling the original channel. Benjamin Murphy, appreciate you, Tanner. Thanks, buddy. Another longtime viewer. But yeah, so one thing I would definitely say I'm guilty for and uh, or guilty of, and it, honestly, it probably won't change, <laughs> is I like that that uh, Shopify will 7.5x by 2025. I clickbait. It, it it honestly becomes like this thing on on Twitter where people are like, ah, you know, it's part of the game. And I hope that the longtime viewers understand that too, right? The problem is is that or at least the way I thought of it. It could be the wrong way of thinking about it. But I wanted to get as many people onto the channel, right? You have to engage them somehow. I'm, I am making thumbnails to get views. It's not like I'm just like, oh, I'm going to make what I like and maybe some people will show up. I mean, there is an aspect of this where I, more views, right? Um, but it's not like, if, if I wanted the most amount of views, I would just copy the... Uh, Tesla content that people want and make that over and over because you, you guys could just Google it, right? Like Google, um, I don't know, VidBuddy or one of these, there's all these tools that YouTubers use to see which, which are the trending topics. And you can see Tesla stock. It'll be like 600,000 people this month have looked up Tesla stock. You look up SoFi stock, it's like 30,000. I, this is not the area to be in to get big views, right? I know, I know a lot about Tesla. I could, I could uh, make videos on that and just cover the basics and say bye, bye, bye and do all that stuff. It's like, no, I think that there's an aspect that I can add value to in the SoFi community. Um, I would like to talk about SoFi, but there's also an aspect of like, you kind of have to pick a lane or uh, pick, uh, talk about Tesla, but you kind of have to pick a lane. I want to give people uh, what they want, but also what I want. And I know that doesn't sound like that's contradicting, but the truth is it's not black or white. It's like, there's a, a gray area there. And, um, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm doing this for, for years, not because it's making me a ton of money, but because I'm truly enjoying it. And, um, yeah, I just, I'm, you're, you're going to keep getting clickbait. Like it's, <laughs> it's going to happen, but you're going to stay if the content is good, right? I've got a 15,600 people, which was like right at the dream area of where I wanted to be. I remember literally sitting down with a colleague of mine and saying like a long time ago, like, imagine if I just had like, you know, 15, 16,000, uh, subscribers. I make YouTube videos, but I also do, um, you know, I'm also a financial advisor and I'm just, you know, I have this cool community and I'm right at that like exact area. And, um, sorry, what, what was I getting at there? Uh, oh, the 15,000 plus people are not subscribing because of my thumbnails or my pictures that I put on my videos. They're subscribing because that's the content. Like they like the content side. That's what I'm worried about. You know, can I, uh, can I add value to someone? Can I, like, I remember one time I, I had this conversation with, um, I think it was Sean 
uh, oh, I'll have to find it. I'm, I'm blanking on who it was. And Jesse Dow, I remember, I think that's the video that he found me on. And he said, I've never thought about SoFi in this way. That's, that's mind blowing. You know, go, go check this guy out or something along these lines. And I thought that's, that's awesome that I, you know, some people can have such a differing way of just thinking about an investment that it'll get people to just be like, hey, I know everything about this stock, but how do you think about it? I don't know. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, uh, you're welcome to come on. I, I'll, I don't know if you have Twitter, but I'll send you a, a link if you want to chat. I've got no, no problems. Um, keep Tevis close. He'll keep you grounded regarding content. I think so. Uh, strongman, do you have like, uh, Twitter or something? How do I send it to you? Um, strong man. Is this you finance underscore underscore strong? Sorry, I'm just waiting for. Okay, I'll uh, I'll follow you. You need to follow me back because your DMs aren't open. Send me a DM and then I'll. Uh... Tanner, you do you. <laughs> I bought the course and I've been investing for decades. I wish I had access to this framework. Just like this when I started, uh, it would have saved me tens of thousands of dollars USD and helped me dramatically on the upside. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm about to uh, have a conversation with a guy that's going to yell at me. Bear with me. I just sent him the link. Sorry, he's still coming in. I don't know what to say during this time. I'm just, uh, yeah. I don't know what they're the Ryu thing is. Or Ryu. Um, I I just I'm I'm content in the the content that I'm making. I think that you know he can he can come on and uh I just want to see if there's uh, like like what he has to say. Hey, buddy. What's up, bro? What's up? Why do, uh, what, why do you think I'm a scammer or a grifter? There is nothing that qualifies you to launch a course. Absolutely nothing, especially the price that you're charging for that thing. So please tell me your qualifications to launch a course. I, I think that if people, I, I mean, no one needs to buy it, right? I'm not, I'm not paywalling my, my content. I'm just stating that um, for like, you, you probably even know this. If, if I'm making videos on YouTube, like I, I was talking about earlier, I made this Anthony J. Noto video going through his background and put all this due diligence into it and it barely got any views. Uh, and if I make a video like going through a Seeking Ar Alpha article and like, you know, bashing someone, that that'll get twice the amount of views and I put zero effort into it. 
So I don't get rewarded at all for deep diving into things and, and going the extra distance. Yeah, dude. So you literally changed your whole channel's direction just to focus on SoFi because you got a lot of views from it, which is fine. You know, that's a YouTube thing. But you literally changed the entire focus of your channel to only talking about SoFi so you could farm views with the long-term intention of launching this course. That's 100% what you did. I, you I think you have... I think to launch a course, man. Like, I think I, you're I, giving I, me way too much, uh, way, way too much uh, foresight there. I think that um, the, the more that I covered SoFi and as the stock had fallen in price... I, I don't well, know if it's me or you're breaking up. Am I breaking up, guys? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, you're breaking up. I don't know if it's me or you. Yeah, I, I just, um, I, 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 I wouldn't, I don't know. Let me leave and come back. Hold on. Go on your computer. How do I close it? Sure. Okay. Uh, as he comes back, and, and hopefully he's uh, listening to this so I don't have to repeat it, but um, I think that I've done well in uh, stocks, right? I like uh, covering growth stocks, and it, it just it simply comes down to that. If other people like the way that I look at stocks, they're going to follow me. If they don't, they won't. And I think that there's a lot of people who have done very well in, in stocks who may not have the best way of uh, talking about it. And so, oh, there he is. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I, I've heard you. You haven't broken up at all, but the chat is saying that um, uh, that it's fine. But uh -huh. essentially, I, I don't think that there's like a need for for uh, qualifications or anything like this. I think that I like my investing framework. The people who watch like my investing framework, and so I make um, I put it into a a nice bundled way and. I can go super deep on the stocks that I love and not have to worry about if the algorithm is going to support it with tons of views. And instead, I can just focus on going into the really nitty gritties and have it community supported. Well, that, that's literally what you did. I, I, I could see your post history. So originally, you posted about a bunch of different stuff, this stock, that stock. And then all of a sudden, you only started talking about SoFi, one company. Yeah. Which a great company. I mean, who knows? Maybe the stock will do fantastic. I don't freaking know. But yeah. it's still one company, and that's all you're talking about. And I think a lot of your audience is going to see all your videos and see your course, and they're going to say, wow, there, there must be something to this SoFi. And if SoFi gets wrecked, which is possible, a lot of people are going to be hurt financially. So my, my criticism is you do need qualifications to talk about individual stocks, Number one, because they're risky. And number two, because you're dealing with people's money and retirements. There's people out there, most people don't have a lot of money to invest. They make an average wage and they could save maybe a couple thousand dollars a year. And the last thing you want to do is only talk about one individual stock and have them put probably a big chunk of their money in one individual stock. Because if that stock gets wrecked and individual stocks can go to zero, those people are actually going to be really hurt. Like you're dealing with people's futures here. It's not just like, oh, it's just a stock and I like it. People are going to watch your course and they're probably going to buy the freaking stock. So so what I'll say to that is, is um, to the people that do watch very often, they'll know SoFi is not my biggest position. It's not in my top five. Um, I don't believe like, it. Sorry? I don't believe that. <laughs> okay, well, my, my biggest positions... It's not your top five. Why are you talking about it all the time? Because no one's talking about it, and and what, dude? Everybody talks about SoFi. It's like it's a YouTube stock. Come on. I, man. I think I think there's uh, positions like Nvidia or or Tesla or um, you know, Shopify or some of these companies that are way bigger in my portfolio that are completely addressed on YouTube. Or there's no want for people to watch it. So that's another thing. I was really into a company called Adyen for a little bit there. And the second I'd start talking about that company, I'd get 60 views. And so I go, okay, people don't want to hear uh, uh, from me about this company. So a little bit of it is going, what do people want me to look into? And I can add value to this area of YouTube.
I've broken a lot of stories on SoFi. I think that in no way should my uh, coverage suggest that, you know, this is what someone's portfolio should look like. I think if you're looking for SoFi content, like that's how I would, I would do it. I go, um, you know, this stock, what's, what's the, what's the thesis on this company? And there's some guy that covers it exclusively. I would want to hear from them because they would know rather than somebody that, you know, does a quick, uh, update on a company. So I'm trying to be that authority in a way of saying, I want to cover every aspect of this company. I want to know it through and through. And if people are looking into this company, they're going to come see me. Right. But do you know, like the basics of financial statements. I mean, like financial statements obviously aren't everything when it comes to an investment, but do you even know how to read a balance sheet or an income statement or a statement of cash flows? Do you have any formal training in that? Because I, I believe if you want to pick individual stocks, which I think is fine with a couple percentage of your portfolio. I think it should mostly be index funds. But if you want to look at individual stocks, you at least have to know the basics of like financial statements and financial ratios. Do you have any training in any of that? So, so I I am a financial advisor, but I don't I don't talk about that often. Um, okay. I I would say that in no way do I think that if you're stating that SoFi might be a bad investment, that that is, you know par for the course. I think that uh, SoFi is what people want to hear about. It's what I like to talk about. And we'll see if it ends up paying off. Because if SoFi does end up doing great things with the with the company, that in no way is anyone going to call me a grifter, right? And uh, if you actually look at the company, they've been performing great. The stock hasn't. But that, I think, is what leads to great alpha in the company. But you didn't answer the question. Do you understand how to read financials? Yes. Companies? I, I used to be a financial advisor, so I know the industry. And I only did it for a couple months because it's, it's a disgusting industry. I'm not saying that for your firm. I don't know what you guys do necessarily. But overall, it's a disgusting industry. But to become a financial advisor, all I had to do was pass some stupid tests that literally taught me nothing about financial statements. It was like ba the basics of stocks and economics and put options. And, oh, I'm a financial advisor. And it was my job to be a salesman. So. Right. I'm still trying to understand, like, do you understand, like, the basics of a balance sheet? Like, assets equals what? How do you, how do you calculate profit, you know, on the accrual yeah. basis? Account? Do you know any of that stuff? Because if yeah, you well, don't, I don't see how you have the, uh, you know, the, the authority to charge, what, what is it, $340 for a, a course on one stock? I mean, dude, I'm a CPA, okay? I don't, for when I prepare somebody's tax return, some people, I don't even charge $340. And I'm a licensed professional that actually knows what I'm doing in my chosen field. So the fact that you're charging $340 to cover one individual stock is yeah. insane to me, especially when it, I, the evidence speaks for itself. SoFi is very covered on YouTube. Everybody knows about SoFi, 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 okay? Everybody freaking talks about it. So, so don't sit there and be like, oh, I'm the only guy that knows about SoFi. That's complete BS. But well, on do, top, you, do you know, do you know, like... The Panel, so you could sell this course. You're, you're taking the path of the grifter. Do you know larger channels that cover SoFi as often as I do? Oh, you got to no. I don't. But you think I watch those channels? It's a waste of my time. No, but, but I'm just saying. You said there's other. There's in, other. Everybody go type in SoFi right now, and you'll see a bunch of channels covering it. Garrett, yeah. I don't care if it's a large. I don't care if Jeremy Lafave covers SoFi. It's 100% talked about by large channels and even smaller channels. So, like, you're not the exclusive source of SoFi. I mean, I'm not saying you don't understand the company in some aspects. Yeah. But I, I don't think you're qualified, even if you're a financial advisor, to talk about SoFi, much less to sell it, sell a course for $340. Because what people are going to do is they are going to buy that stock. And some people might put a lot of money into that stock. And I've learned this as a YouTuber. You don't want to talk about individual stocks that much because when you do, people listen to you and they do stupid stuff. And then they get freaking wrecked and you bear a little bit of responsibility. I would say obviously not, probably not legal, but maybe moral responsibility for charging people, teaching them about a company you may not even understand how to read the financials for. And then they go ahead and invest in that company and it gets wrecked. Right. So it, the, the, the course isn't necessarily, so there's, there's a bunch of things. Whether you think that it's prominent to invest in individual courses is your own investment theory. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. 
No, it's an investment fact. <laughs> I can put $340 into a total market index fund in a tax advantage account, let it grow for 40 years, and I'll get more value than buying a, a $340 course on an individual stock. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe. 100%. But I, I don't think that there's people who have, you know, a million dollars to invest that $340 makes a dent in their portfolio to know whether or not that they're, uh, they have the information that they need on SoFi. Do you think, you think millionaire, I mean, I'm sure there's a couple millionaires, maybe, but do you think the, the mass majority of your audience is millionaires? I, I, would I, I already told, so, so here, here's a couple of things that I think you're missing. One is this, I told people this course is for six plus pick figure portfolios. Okay. This is not for everyone. It also, I'm still doing all the regular content. So I'm not paywalling anyone from what they were getting previously. So the beautiful thing about capitalism is if people think that the value is there and they want the value, then they will go and buy it. And if they don't think so, and they're hurt by that, then send me an email and I'll send your money back. <laughs> like it, there's no, there's no problem there. So, so if ever, so it, let's say, you, you know, you, you have this course and you get all these sales and you get all this money coming in and then SoFi collapses 90%, which is, I mean, anything's possible. You're saying you would re if everybody emailed you and they were pissed, you would reimburse everybody. Uh, I mean, who knows if I'm able to do that, but yeah, I would, I would assume that in your perfect hypothetical that the stock is going to randomly drop 90%. You, that, look, uh, individuals, most companies in the long run don't exist anymore. <laughs> like you, but, you look at a company, most companies in 1900 don't exist now. And it's entirely possible that this could happen to so far. I'm not saying it will happen, but it's possible. And if, if that happens, you're, you're setting yourself up for a huge backlash. That's right. the, another, I mean, just for, for you personally, that's a huge danger on your, you know, on your, on your end is this company could go to shit and then you got to reimburse all these people, which I know you're not going to be able to do because you're going to spend the money or invest it or whatever. It's not a good idea. You know, you know, and then you look at your past performance, you know, there's plenty of stocks you've picked or said are going to seven X or whatever. And you've gotten absolutely clapped on those stocks. Like, like uh, Shopify you're talking about. Well, I mean, yeah, tons of stocks. Okay. It, no, no. Well, I just, I just want to address that uh, really quick. You're talking about Shopify, the seven X one. I, 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 yeah, I think it was Shopify. I mean, it doesn't matter. I was looking through your channel, and a lot of stocks you talked about. But I just want to address that really quick. In the in that video, you said that I said that so or Shopify was going to seven point five X by twenty twenty five. You put it in your freaking title or something. Dude. I did. I did. <laughs> well, I, don't, I guess what does that tell so, me? So did you think that the title was the thesis of the video? I like, don't. Do you, do you think that that's fair to assume? You put it in the title. Yeah, I mean, because, unless, because unless I even said on this exact video, I said, it's clickbait. I get people on the thing. And then I said, I even said, I think that the stock is a hold. I don't. Uh, it was based on a Montley Fool article that I was picking apart that was uh, saying that Shopify would go to a trillion dollars by 2025. Seems legit. Well, I I didn't think it was legit. That's why I made a video on it. Yeah. And did, so you're telling me. So out of all the stocks, have you have you outperformed the market? Like, let's say uh, a total U.S. market or a total world market. Have you personally outperformed the market? Yes. Yeah. You you can provide proof of that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't cover uh, my own portfolio or anything along those lines. Dude, that's BS. People don't people. This is a free market. You don't have to watch. That's I mean, what I'm stating. Like, like I've been, I've been very open with everyone that's, that's watched that I say, you know what? There's a lot of friends and family who watch this. I'm not here to talk numbers. Okay. I don't want people to, to judge me differently. It's, this is not just for YouTube regular people in my own life. Watch me, you know? And so, so would you, would you be a little bit guilty? Let's say your family is watching or something and you know, they buy SoFi and they get wrecked. Would you feel guilty at all about that? Because that's entirely possible with an individual stock. I would say an index over the long run, you know, assuming the world economy grows over time, you know, hopefully the index over time will go up as, you know, the world becomes better and people become more productive, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't happen to individual stocks. Some stocks, some, very few select stocks do very well and the vast majority do not do well. So would you feel guilty at all if your family you know, watched that your videos and said, Oh, you know, my son or whatever smart, and I'm gonna buy this so far, they get absolutely wrecked. 
How would you feel about that? I, if they said, hey, Tanner, should I buy SoFi? I'd say, don't follow what I'm doing. Do your own due diligence. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's what I always say. Don't, yeah. don't follow me into trades. If you find out with your own due diligence that you like SoFi, you go ahead and buy it. Look, but I'm not saying either way. I, I don't know people are going to follow you. Okay. I don't that's know that. I, you know it. That's why, you know, I, I talk about VT in every freaking video because I know people are going to listen to me. And even if I say, don't buy this dog, do your own due diligence. If they listen to me and I'm convincing, they're going to freaking buy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, oh, okay. Somebody buys VT. Oh, wow. You know, call the SEC on me. I think people will be fine in the long run if they buy a total market, a total world market index fund. But individual stock, that's dangerous, dude. No, it's like not, like I said, I, I even said this in this entirely. My my strategy is very speculative, very high growth. There'll be stocks like skills that, you know, got completely crushed, you know? But yeah, people can't fool around like that. I mean, <laughs> nobody look, needs to. Nobody needs to. It's my but they're portfolio. Going to, by listening to you. They this is a free world. I, I I can't talk about things without worrying that someone's going to follow me in, you know? Yes, because you are financially benefiting. You are lining your own pockets by selling this course, collecting ad revenue on YouTube, by talking about highly risky growth stocks, which I, I think, think is that, more I, wrong. I don't think that people follow me in that way. I think that people looking for information are typing in the stocks that they're looking for, and then I am giving information on what I think is that stock. Yeah, and you're giving very positive information. Well, Our sometimes channel. negative. Sometimes negative. I but Overall, I, don't... I would say your channel is a uh, a pretty positive on SoFi. So oh, you're just... SoFi, yeah. So, but like pe people will know. I've, I I pick apart a lot of their aspects of, you know, their credit card business. I've been some of the the very rare rare people in this, uh, you know, sort of niche group or whatever this cult <laughs> of people that. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a cult stock on uh, in retail. I mean, I'm not going to like that but, that's true. But, same thing with Tesla, same thing with talks about it. Sorry, go ahead. So you say it's a cult stock, but then you're the only one that talks about it. I I think that there's not a larger person on YouTube that talks about SoFi the way that I talk about it. So are you the leader of the SoFi cult? I I am one of the people that brings a lot of the information to the to the SoFi, you know, community. Which I think is, I'm not saying it's a cult, but that is the common phrase of whenever there's a large retail audience, it's called a cult stock. I'd say Tesla falls in there. I'd say NVIDIA falls in there. But those have been historically good investments as well. Well, you know, past performance means absolutely nothing about future performance. I know, but you, but I'll, I'll say that to you as well. <laughs> like, that doesn't mean anything. It, yeah, I, don't, I think the, the problem and why I invited you on is that you, that you think that because I'm selling a course to uh, willing buyers who know the price and um, want what I'm talking about, that, that, that that's a problem or that's a scam, as if I'm not giving them what, what they're buying. Okay, you know? well, you know, I'm going to make a course that, you know, VT is going to 100,000 X in five seconds, and I'm going to be very convincing and people are going to buy it. And hey, it's free market capitalism, bro. When, 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 is, uh, when was my expectation that SoFi will 10 X? Do you know? I, 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 dude, I don't watch. What do you think I said? <laughs> what do you think I said? I, dude, I, it doesn't matter. You, the whole focus of your channel is pumping SoFi. It's not. That's it's not pumping SoFi. It's talking about a company that I'm extremely bullish on, and sharing all the news that comes people, out on this company, yeah. good and bad. You should really. I mean, as a fine. I mean, so as a financial advisor, if you had a client, mm -hmm. would you put them into SoFi? If somebody said, "I want to put, I want to invest in like ten percent of my portfolio in SoFi." If yeah. you're a fiduciary, would you do that? So even in this video, I talked about the fact that the reason why I love YouTube is because a large amount of the investments that I talk about uh, through my job cannot be highly speculative, right? The, I work with a lot of older clients. I can't, I can't do that. But that doesn't why? mean that I don't like those stocks. Yeah, but why, why, you know, in your professional life, why do you not? <laughs> why do you tend to avoid stocks like SoFi? Because, because. Whenever you're talking about more speculative stocks, they need a longer time time horizon. Like even the Nasdaq versus the S and P, the Nasdaq has way larger drops than the S and P 500. And if you're a really old client going into potentially a point in the retirement where they have to start withdrawing, that you're not going to want to have forced withdrawals during a time where you know the market's down 35 percent in 2022. 
so well, you put them in so you put them in investments that are much more conservative that have much less fluctuation but also less upside but i'm i'm extremely young i'm 26 and i like having more upside and if you can outlive the the the, the down periods that you're more likely to have a outperformance in stocks it's why people put you know younger people into more equities and then as they get older they go into more fixed income that's okay. Just, what, what what's the down what's the downside of SoFi? Uh, a zero. Hundred percent. Yeah. So you know, if you're a young person, I would say you should probably avoid individual stocks unless they're a small part of your portfolio. If you want to do it for fun, because oh yeah, you could maybe get upside, which is highly unlikely when you look at the history of the vast majority of stocks that don't do well. But you could get a hundred percent downside, and if you lose a hundred percent of your investment. That is a insane opportunity cost, massive opportunity cost. Yeah. The, what do I actually think is the, like every, any individual stock can go to zero. Do I think so far the, the chartered bank will go to zero? No. You don't I think don't. banks go to zero? I, I think banks go to zero. I don't think that so far goes to zero. Okay. I mean, I think, like I said, there's a possibility, but I think that everyone knows that possibility. I don't think they really do. I think most people just say, oh, there's no way it could go to zero. It's going to 10x or whatever, because I watch Tanner on YouTube, and he's so knowledgeable about the company or whatever. Dude, most people don't understand the downside. People got caught with their pants down in 2022. They got freaking wrecked. And there were plenty of companies that went to zero in 2022, especially pumped by big YouTubers, as I'm sure you know, and you've actually interviewed on your channel. And that's another thing. That just reminds me. So do you know, do you hang out with Jeremy LaFave? I, yeah, I've done multiple videos with Jeremy. Okay. Do you know anything about how much of a massive fraud, scammer, and liar that Jeremy LaFave is? I, I don't want to talk about Jeremy at all. I like Jeremy. Okay. okay. Well, so just the fact that you associated with him tells me all I need to know. You're following in his footsteps. You're doing it. You, both of you guys, I don't think you've outperformed the market. Do I you, don't, do you um, do you know Amit from for Palatier? Him. Yeah, I've met him before. What what's your opinions on him? I think he's doing the exact same thing. I think he's talking about popular stocks to grow his subscriber base mm -hmm. and enrich himself. Every popular YouTube stock he talks about. Okay. It's but, it's kind of so obvious to me. It's like, oh, well, what's gonna get me the most views? Cult stocks. So I'm gonna talk about cult stocks and Lo and behold, you guys get subscribers, you get views, and then eventually comes the course. It happens every single time. And I'm not necessarily... But why, we, why are you anti the course? If, if it's bringing the value that people like, want... Qualified. Okay, if I, like, I have a course, qualified. right? Okay, you know what my course is? I teach accounting. I talk about accounting. You know why? Because I'm a certified public accountant, and I have multiple years of experience in tax, in doing financial statements, I am qualified to make a course on accounting. I'm qualified to do tax returns. I'm qualified to do all that because I'm a CPA. That is, but when you compare that to an individual stock channel, no, there's totally different. Even if you're a financial advisor, that doesn't mean anything. I know no, because I, you see one. It's great how large the world is with so many different, you know, avenues that you can go down with different interests. That's what interests you. It's not what interests me. And I like risky growth stocks that have outperformed the market. And uh, and I like that. And I'm young enough to uh, bear the risk and claim the reward. And I mean, do whatever you want with your money. I'm not telling you any, you, know, you can do whatever you freaking want. I think you should buy index funds, but that's, you know, if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. But the problem comes in when you start talking about individual stocks to young, gullible followers. And then on top of that, you sell them a three hundred forty dollar course on an one a, one stock. So it's not on one stock. It's on a, a a framework of of how I look for stocks. So it's not about uh, SoFi right now is the case study of saying this is a stock that hasn't grown yet. This is how I'm looking at it and why I'm investing in it for a ten x, and I'm doing that before it ten x's. So then I will end up looking great if it does. And if it doesn't, I'll take the reputational hit on if it doesn't. But that's yep. my... You won't lose. Look, 
I've already seen other YouTubers like your buddy Jeremy. They have lost tons. Like they have invested in multiple companies that have gone bankrupt. And oh yeah, they take a little bit of a hit. But once your channel's big enough, you don't go away. So, so I, you, you I, I the market, but your channel gets big enough, you're still going to be around, and you can still keep selling whatever course you want to sell, and it doesn't matter. But you're going to leave a thousands of people potentially, depending on the size of your audience, holding the bags and being really hurt. And it, it actually is a big deal. It isn't just a joke. It's not like, oh, let's go gamble five bucks, whatever. I think I think that the difference is that I think that people have the the ability to look at something and say, I am making my own decision on this. I'm not blindly walking into this. I like I think people understand that investments are extremely risky. And especially during a time whenever markets are extremely down and the people who come to a, a channel to talk about stocks are usually people who have access capital to distribute that are looking for um, additional information on a stock that they were already potentially talking about. That you know? is the audience of YouTube. Come on. Do, do, you, you think like a sophisticated, wealthy, most sophisticated, wealthy people are watching your channel on SoFi? Or you think it's a bunch of dudes with Robin Hood accounts? I, I think a bunch of, I've even had a bunch of viewers on the channel. Most times we just talk about the stocks and what we like and the news that has come out about them. And there's not like the occasional time people on uh, Twitter say, hey, when is SoFi going to do or, or going to get to $500 a share? And I said, you know, you're watching the wrong channel. I, like, I'm not saying this stock is going to 100x or something along these lines. It's like, I think that's, uh, you know, save that for a different YouTuber. But I honestly don't think, I think the market really rewards people who give good value. The people who are saying SoFi is going to $500 or something like this, they don't get views because people think that that's ridiculous. And the people, and the people who are being average about their their performances, people go, "Oh, that's a decently realistic guy." Like, look at, uh, uh, I don't know if five hundred is ridiculous, but you know, ten x, I guess that's okay, or twenty x maybe. So th there's like a fine line, you know. Th there, there's a certain x you got to put in there. Depends on the timeline, right? Depends on the timeline. Because if I say ten x in ten years, how how absurd is that? That and to me, that's pretty absurd because you have no idea what's going to happen in ten years. Yeah, no, I, I don't go to zero than ten x. I know, and that's why I don't say it's a guarantee, and it's what my opinion is. And I, I talk about that often. I, I do a daily live stream. I think people that watch get a feeling for how I how I invest or what I'm looking for, and that I am critical whenever things come out that are bad. Um, and I'm bullish whenever I get excited. I'm a, I'm a human being, you know? But yeah, I don't think that it's fair. A little critical so you can say, oh, I'm balanced. See, I'm balanced, you know? But in reality, you know, you're, you're, you're not critical. You're, you're basically shilling so far. That's what you're really doing. Like, the, the impartialness, I, I don't think you're impartial at all. And I think a big motivation of that is for your own financial benefit. Not from the stock, but from selling courses. I mean... You know, I know how YouTube, I'm a YouTuber. I know, you know, we get ad revenue and blah, 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 blah. But the, the majority of money for a YouTuber comes from courses and outside stuff. So this this course is the cash grab. I, it's not the SoFi videos. Well, it, the, 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 the idea is, is that if I'm putting months towards something that is not going to get regular views on YouTube, if you go too deeply into content, you make a, a four-hour video on YouTube, it wouldn't get past 1,000 views. And so for me to put that many hours into something to get purely ad revenue on would not be worth my time. So to ask of someone a one-time fee for not only what is there right now, but also building on it over time, I don't think is even remotely overpriced. And, You're and about the stock, you know, like, why do you have to sell a course? On? Why can't you just talk about it? I'm sorry. I make money from talking about VT. I get made fun of all the time for talking about VT. I don't, I, I, dude, my channel would be 100 times bigger if I talked about all the stocks that you talk about. But I don't do that because I think it's freaking wrong. And that's your prerogative. And, and that's, I, that's right. And it's, it's the morally righteous way to do it because you, I, I'm actually helping people. You, 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 don't, you don't think that uh, capitalism is more morally righteous, that I should be worth a dollar for, for my value of time, or like, like for my hours of time? Yeah, but the, the value is moral for me to that look, to get paid for doing work. 
look, yeah, if you're qualified to do the work. That I mean, and that's where we differ. That's it, you're just that's your I, speculation. It's not speculation. It's not at all. So you told me you, okay, apparently I, I I didn't get an answer. I guess you know how to read financial statements and you're a financial advisor. That's your qualifications. That th those aren't impressive qualifications to me. The <laughs> that's your prerogative, man. That, I, and, and I'm going to speak out against this course. That's why I did it. Because <laughs> I don't no, think and, and, qualified. and I think even if you even if you were qualified, you could be wrong. And if you're wrong and the stock is freaking wrecked, people are going to get hurt. There is you will affect real people. You just don't see it because you I mean, I'm a YouTuber. I know you just make a video and then you see some numbers on the views, but it's real people watching you. Right. I, I, I guess maybe I think a little bit uh, higher of the people to not just follow in blindly and just whatever. I think that people are making their own decisions, and I'm adding a point of view to uh, you know show them what, how I'm thinking about something. But rational people can become irrational when you throw a 10x in their face. Because most people have jobs, and they don't want to work forever, blah, 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 blah. But you're like, oh, this stock at 10x. And what do you think that does? That entices people to invest in the stock because they think, oh, this is my ticket out of my normal life to becoming a millionaire. That's the whole point of the 10x crap you put on there. I think whenever I stated that it's for six-figure six portfolios, that it's not really talking about getting someone out of the life that they uh, are currently living. But um, uh, man, I, I, I respect your hustle. I do. And... Um, I think we differ, and I don't think that uh, individual stocks versus ETFs, net, like I'm sure over the uh, for the average person or whatever, ETFs are a great option. I've invested in ETFs. I think that uh, individual stocks for me, someone who's just personally excited about person or uh, individual investments and doing the research and everything, is not a crime for me to be interested in that. And then, in fact, it's not a crime for me to put time into something that that people want. I didn't say it was a crime to be interested in the stock. Or even morally morally wrong. Well, I'm saying there's nothing morally wrong about liking a company, but it is pumping the stock because you know it gets a lot of views. And then using that that fame that you've got to sell a course on that individual stock. Do you think that it would it would be better for me to talk about like Tesla or something like those? Like no. I no? I think I don't think you should talk about any of them unless you're making fun of them. <laughs> Fair play. I, I think you should say, hey, I, I think the vast majority of you should have 95 to 100 percent of your money in index funds. And if you want to screw around with an individual stock, dedicate less than five percent of your entire portfolio to that. Yeah, but I, I don't even I OK, but what you're doing, trust me, people that are watching you, they're not getting that impression. They're probably I, they're, I, if, if I don't have 95 percent of my portfolio in ETFs, I this is not. Um, a, a, a financial portfolio channel. I'm talking about individual uh, pieces of news and giving my opinion on them. So I think that you are, are treating me like a, uh, like a, a full on, you know, investment personality when really I'm just talking about a small selection of fintech companies that I think that I look at that, uh, you know, people are interested in watching and giving the information on that. Oh, that's that's all you're doing, right? You just you're just passionate about SoFi, and that's it. I mean, yeah, yeah, I like the investment. Okay, I mean, just it just has that ancillary benefit of you know all of a sudden getting you a lot of subs and views and being able to sell your course. That 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 just happened to happen on the side. If if people want, yeah, dude, I like I said, I I like the company called Adyen. No one wants to watch it. I think that. Uh, you want to place me in either black or white, but some areas are, are gray. I want to I want to make videos where people are actually interested in hearing that content, but also I want to talk about what I want to talk about. And that middle ground for me right now is SoFi. And I think that it's a great investment. And <laughs> it's and, not a ground. All uh, your, like every video is SoFi now. Every one. I don't but think you watch enough of my content. But whatever. It's all SoFi. So far, so far, so far. And I'm from a long term perspective, I mean, even as a YouTuber, I think it's not a good idea to have like your channel focus on one stock. Most of those channels die. That, but that's your prerogative, man. No, so let, let, let's let my channel die, you know. But I do talk about, Hallelujah. you know, 
PayPal, Cash App, Adyen, uh, you know, there's a there's a bunch of different fintech companies. I like being the guy that covers that sector. It allows me to do more information. And YouTube allows me uh, to do what I was doing before, research for my own portfolio and monetize my time and grow a community and share ideas. And yep. I think that the reason why I invited you on is because but you seem to you're have saying a that that's a... Docs. It's like every, every YouTuber seems to suddenly have a passion for PayPal. And every YouTuber seems to suddenly have a passion for Palantir. And I know how it works. Because every time I make a video about PayPal or Palantir, I get double the views. Right. You find a I guy... F go, go find a guy that talked about PayPal earlier than I did. Because I, oh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't following a trend. I, I found something that I like to talk about. And then it, I still like the company. I don't think it's going to be a 10x. I think it's a great trade until it passes $100 a share. And that's... to be every company that you're passionate about just happens to be a popular stock on YouTube. Adyen? Adyen or Block? Whatever. Block? I don't, do you talk about Block? I, I mean, you talk about SoFi, it looks like, all the time. I don't know. You, you probably mentioned Block once or twice, but... Anyway, man. Um, like I said, I do appreciate your time. Um, and maybe, like, I don't know, six months from now, I can have you back on. Because my, my hope would be that I'm not gaining, you know, haters or something like this, that people that don't like me. Because honestly, I do think that I'm putting out a pretty honest product. Um, and maybe we can come back or, you know, whatever. I don't know uh, what you think. Yeah, well, ha have Jeremy on too when I come back. <laughs> I, <laughs> people are their own individual people. I'm not, I'm not speaking for, for Jeremy. Yeah, it's a suggestion. I'm, I'm, you know, obviously, I can't force him to do anything. But Anyway, man. I appreciate your time. All right, later. Bye. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Tanner has his course. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm not. Like, like I said, I'm. I'm never going to get into YouTube to, to fight anyone. I don't like the drama or anything like that. The idea that someone has something wrong with me, it's like I just don't feel like I'm doing the wrong thing. And I think both of us are right. If he thinks that it's a morally dangerous thing to talk about highly speculative stocks, then he's right. But if I think that people can make their own decisions on risk, and if people know the risk, then they're able to buy those positions. That's why they're publicly traded for anyone that can create an account, because the, the regulators know that if people want to do their own due diligence, then they're able to take their own risks. People are allowed to smoke cigarettes or do these things. It's like, I'm not, I'm not forcing anyone to, to buy these things. I like SoFi. I'm covering SoFi. Um, but that uh, was like a, what I thought was going to be a 20, 20 minute show that turned into about an hour and 20 minutes. So um, honestly, I'm happy I had him on. Um, PayPal. There we go. Yeah, New Bank. Like, like, let, let, let's find a lot of people who were talking about New Bank before I started talking about New Bank. You know, it's still I don't get a lot of uh, <laughs> views for New Bank, but I like the company. Highly speculative. Anyway, thank you everyone for uh, for for watching, and I'll probably do this like every six months, just sort of address and. Uh, um, what do you think SoFi's earnings will be? Oh, Michael Anthony, that was a great question. Uh, where is it? So I am probably putting out a video tomorrow. It's already recorded. It's just a matter of me putting it together, just my predictions and how I got there. So uh, for the people who are interested in SoFi and you guys want to see how I look at this company, you tell me if I'm, if I'm pumping it based on my predictions uh, or anything like that. So Uh, I thought I saw. Oh, thanks. Danny, thank you, man. Appreciate you. I I mean, I I actually don't think that he's trolling. I think that he yeah, I I actually think that some of the things that he said are are true. I mean, it's <laughs> it's safer to be in ETFs, but 
safer doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right investment for someone who can handle risk. And I find that I have uh, a very good stomach for investing. And I don't think that I should be continuing to talk my girlfriend's ear off all the time about <laughs> companies that she's sick of hearing. So find a community to talk about the things that you like. You know? Um, anyways, guys, thank you so much. Really do appreciate your time. I, uh, we'll see you tomorrow or I've got a video coming out and then the FinTech frenzy. I don't know how to end this. So the music's not going. It's kind of weird. Anyway, love you guys. Bye.